Okay, hey everyone, welcome to another live stream. Now today I am super excited for you all to join in. Um, hopefully my microphone is working great now. And I'm going to be sharing how to stamp and watercolor using Crayola markers. So I shared a video just a while ago and after the stream I'll have it linked up here on screen. Um, and I'm going to be sharing well, I shared that video a while ago, um, sharing how to stamp with markers and get some really cool results with different types of markers. But I realized not everybody wants to really invest in a ton of different markers, or you might want to get a different and unique result. So I'm going to be using Crayola markers today to show you guys a couple different watercolor effects. And that way you don't have to really invest in lots of watercolor markers um, if you don't want to. They give similar results because they're water-based and they make some really cool watercolor cards. So hey everyone, hey Melody, um, I'm so glad you guys all joined me today and that you guys can hear me now. Um, so this is my live stream that we're doing today, so I'll kind of look off to this side and I can see all of your comments and um, how things are doing over there. So let's turn down my work surface and get right into the project now. And if you guys have any questions while we go through, I'll be happy to answer them as well. So leave them in the chat for sure. So here are the two cards that I had created earlier playing around with this fun technique. And these are the watercolor that I created using those Crayola markers. So it looks like a really high quality watercolor, you know, that you might, you know, regular markers that you might buy from the crafting industry, but it's really just Crayola markers. And I think sometimes those can be really overlooked um, when you're creating your projects too. And I'm using some Dino Wakely stamps for this. Now, I thought her stamps were just awesome, especially for this technique. Um, I got a lot of comments on my last video that I shared this technique with because I used all rubber stamps. Um, wondering if you can use clear stamps with this um, marker stamping technique. And all I have to say to that, let me turn it back up here. All I have to say to that is you definitely can use clear stamps. It's not going to harm them. It's not going to do anything bad to your clear stamps. However, rubber stamps hold the ink from markers a little bit better. Since the markers are really water-based, they tend to kind of bubble up on any kind of clear stamp. Um, you might have better luck with photopolymer clear stamps, but I tend to gravitate towards rubber when I'm stamping with a marker directly onto it. So let's turn back down here. So these are the stamp sets. And what I love about them is that they're scribbly. So they've got all these um, cool scribbly details here. So these are the birds. Um, you have the scribbly insects, which I just love. Um, so they're really kind of freehand, oh, which I really like with that watercolor look. So you don't have to make it look perfect, and I really love that. So I'm not choosing, you know, um, I'm not choosing really like inline perfect images because if I go out of the line or whatever, I want to make it look like I meant to do that. You need to do more stamping, Melody. I buy a lot of stamps too, but I, I you know, hopefully find lots of uses to uh, do with them. Alcohol Lift Ink, can you use clear stamps to grab and pick up the ink? Yep, with the Alcohol Lift Ink, you can use um, whatever kind of stamps. I have a video um, sharing the Alcohol Lift Ink here on my channel as well. Okay, so let's get right on into the tutorial. For the first thing, I used this fun little bird stamp with both of them on the branches. And I'm going to show you the first technique to stamp with the Crayola markers. And then later on, I'll show you um, some different ways you can um, to get a similar result. Okay. So I'm going to just pick this up with an acrylic black here. I'll remount it there just to make sure it's nice and centered. Okay, so then let's get right on into our watercolor. And I also wanted to mention, if you see anything you love in this uh, video tutorial that I'm sharing today, and you want to purchase any of the supplies that I'm using, I'll have links all down below in the description box to some different variety packs of Crayola markers, and also some of these fun stamps from Dina, so be sure to check that out down there as well. Okay, so starting off with just a regular Crayola marker here. Um, these are just, you know, regular washable markers. And all I'm going to do is just color right onto the stamp here. Starting out with this darker kind of orange color. You can see I'm not really, you know, taking a ton of time to really care exactly where I put the marker. It doesn't really matter exactly where all that goes. So I'll go in with one of the fine tip markers here. These are the super tips. These are really nice to um, do the stamping with. And when I'm using a felt tip marker too, I shared this in my last video, um, you want to, I'm going to go in with red next. I'm doing kind of warm tones on one bird and cool tones on the other. So when you're doing this, you want to kind of tilt your marker on the side. This is a felt tip marker, so you don't want to stand it up like this and give it too much pressure. By tilting it, you're really saving your marker tip 
and not really destroying them. And obviously these are Crayola markers, so if you do have to replace one or two, it's not going to be a huge deal. Um, but that really helps to keep your markers nice and keep them to have a really nice fine point on them. So then I'll go down here and I'll do the feet on the birds. And I'll also color in the little beaks too. And then for this bird, I'm going to do some greens. So just going in here with a light green. And we just kind of keep a bucket of markers on hand from when we were little and we had to, you know, take them for school supplies. Um, so we have tons to choose from. These are all different brands, but Crayola definitely has lots of different um, choices of great markers you can, you can look through there. And these super tips are really awesome too because they're a little bit more fine so you can get into some of those smaller details then. And then I'll go in lastly with this blue. I'll just take that blue um, all around the image here. And then to finish this off, I'm just going to take the brown marker and color in the branch here. So you can go across and color in that branch really easily. Okay, so once that's all done, you have your image all colored. You can see it there. Now, if you're just going to stamp it like this, you definitely can. All I would recommend doing is giving it a good puff of warm air, and it kind of rejuvenates the marker. However, I kind of want a watercolor look, kind of like a beginner watercolor look. I'm not great with watercolor, but I like to make it look like I am. So I'm going to take a little spray bottle here, and I'm just going above and spraying that, you know, about two or three times there. And I'm also using Bristol cardstock here. I'm not sure if I already talked about this, but um, the Bristol cardstock is great for markers. So if you're using water-based markers or anything, I would definitely recommend Bristol. It gives them, it kind of sits on top of the surface. Um, it's not a coated cardstock, but I find that it gives these um, markers a little bit more of a chance to um, kind of sit on the surface and create that watercolor effect. And you'll see in just a second, they're more movable on this cardstock. And one thing that I forgot, which is kind of making them look a little bit creepy, is I definitely forgot to color in their eyes. Um, so let me just grab a marker here. I'm going to grab that black marker so I can color in their eyes really quickly. I thought I had all my uh, colors chosen here, but I definitely forgot the black marker. So the hard part about this is since they're not clear stamps, you can't look through them to, you know, see exactly where the eye would have been. So I'll just kind of draw an eye in there. It might look a little bit creepy, um, but, you know, my drawing capabilities aren't perfect. So I'll just add that little eyeball on there. And there you go. Just a, pretend that little eyeball was actually stamped in and you've got a really cool image there which looks awesome. I love that kind of watercolor effect with those markers. Um, yeah, this paper holds, oh yeah, the uh, rubber stamps hold the markers a little bit better than clear stamps do. So then, if you want to take this to another level, you definitely can leave it how it is, just with stamping with that marker. But, you can go in here with a water brush and just pull some of that color out. Now I'm not going really rough and you know pushing too hard and pulling every line and detail out. I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to bring some more of that watercolor look out. And you know, I'm not messing with the lines too much here because I want that detail to still show like I'm saying, but I just kind of want to pull just a little bit of light color from those lines. So you get a little bit of a watercolor look there. And this one has lots of lines so I can pull out that color and kind of shade in that image a little bit more. And this is what I was talking about too with these scribbly images. I would definitely recommend picking these up because they're super fun to do something like this with them where, you know, you kind of scribble in the image and it just looks like it kind of belongs because that image is already that scribbly, beautiful design. So I'll go in here and paint their little feet in and then we'll finish it off by just painting in that little branch there. And there you go, you have that really fun two birds sitting there and they look really beautiful with that fun watercolor. So this was just Crayola markers, which really kind of surprises me when I tried this out. I, uh, you know, saw it, I, I tried it out the first time and I thought it was really awesome. And then I played around with it and found a couple of different ways to kind of stretch them even further. Thanks, Melody. I'm so glad. Yeah, use your stamps up there. Uh, stamps can be so much fun for sure. You can purchase Crayola markers for $1 during back to school sales, so that's a perfect time to do it. This is like great, um, 
for different colors and things like that. And I love having a variety of colors too, lights and dark colors, um, rather than just the really primary markers. So there go my dogs, <laughs> perfect timing. They are, you know, always in the live streams. <laughs> One day you guys are gonna meet them for sure. So here is that finished card. What I did is I just fussy cut that image out and I cut out a little window frame with a die cut, um, ran it through my Gemini Junior, and then I stuck this up with foam tape, added some jewels, and um, it kind of finished off the card. So this is just a really fun way to finish off that card. And I love how that looks with those fun watercolor birds. So you can play around, like I, I changed the colors here, you can play around with adding different colors on the birds. I tend to stick with warm and cool just because I know it's not gonna make mud, but you can play around. Um, kind of the sky's the limit with this for sure. Um, you guys are asking, does it damage the rubber stamps? No, it does not damage the rubber stamps. It's actually, um, it comes off easier than your inks might. Um, so let me show you guys. So you can actually keep stamping with this maybe another time to get kind of a softer watercolor look. And I'm just gonna go ahead and clean it off for you guys here. So I'm just taking even just a little bit of water. Just some water. Because they're water-based markers. And look, that stamp is all clean then. You can even go in with some stamp cleaner if you want to make sure that all the colors off, but all the colors removed from this, they're washable water-based markers, um, so just some water will pull them off really easily. I, I'm so glad you guys are loving this. It's really fun to kind of play with, you know, Crayola markers because, you know, they're given kind of, you know, that childlike um, kids craft kind of annotation or, you know, like kind of feeling to them, but they really can create some stunning effects. So next, let's start off by coloring in an image here. So I'm just gonna take this stamp from the Scribbly Fishies. I love these fun little names too. And um, we're gonna color in this fun little turtle here. So I'll take this stamp, it's just that rubber stamp again, from one of Dina's sets. And I'm gonna stamp this one down. So I'm using Ranger Archival Ink. This is a waterproof ink, so it'll stamp really nicely with this. And again, using my Bristol cardstock. I forgot to link that down below, but um, you can find Bristol all over, um, kind of on Amazon or some different craft stores online too. And I'll link it after the stream too. So I'll ink that up nicely. And then I'll stamp it right here on the card. So once I've got that stamped down, all we need to do is color it in now. So let me show you how to do that really quickly and easily. So look, I'm just going to go in with some Crayola markers again, and I'm just going to add some color into here. So we're just kind of scribbling color. Look, I'm not even taking, you know, the time of day to really color this in nicely, just scribbling. Trust me, it'll turn out great in the end. So I'm going to grab my water brush again, and I'm just going to water this out. You can see the color kind of like disintegrates. Um, with that water there. So it really blends and spreads. And again, that Bristol cardstock helps um, to really blend that color too, rather than just a regular cardstock. This Bristol really helps that stuff spread easily. So there we go, we have that first layer. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in my heat gun and heat set this really quickly. So we didn't add tons of water to this, but by heat setting it, we can add on more layers and not have our markers get ruined because sometimes those felt tip markers, if you add it over and over on that wet surface, it can kind of pull apart the um, nib there. So then I'm going to go in with a little bit of a more yellow green color. I want to bring some yellow into this little turtle too. So I'll scribble some of that color in. Again, just scribbling really quick. And I'll just blend that in too. So we got more of that yellow tones going. Um, I think I used that, that lighter color there with that yellow. Yeah, I believe, um, I believe those Crayola markers are all water-based. Um, not quite sure what they all make, but I believe most of them are. I've linked down below some of the super tips and those are so much fun and they come in you know, larger packs or smaller packs so you can get a different variety of colors if you, you know, are interested in using them for crafting because, again, they really do, you know, create some really cool effects. And I think, like, the biggest pack is, like, um, 10 or $11, and you can even go to the smallest pack for 
way cheaper. So it's a really cool option for coloring and you know stamping and images like this too. So now I'll go in and I'm shading this. So you can see where Dina has added those you know dots or lines and you can add your shading in right there then. So I'm just blending out some of that darker color and on the little turtle squares on his back I'm adding in some of that darker color and blending it together too. Okay, so now that I've done that, you can see I'm kind of creating, um, each one comes out a little bit different. So you can see this one's a little bit darker already than this one. Um, so you can get a different result with each one. Then I'm going to heat set this again. It's all about layering with these, um, with these kind of things. It's really about, you know, just layering the colors together to get your desired effect. So if you don't love it, just layer on some more colors. And if you still don't love it, after you're all done, it's just paper. I always say it's just paper. You can always get rid of it if you don't love what you created. But, you know, you can always try to, you know, fix it, what you don't like about it, you know. Okay, so I'll add a little bit of brown in here. That was a really dark brown there. Um, just to kind of the outer edge of his shell. And if I want to, I can wipe off some color. I've got a really dirty rag here, and I wipe off my color to the side. And then I'll bring in that darker brown. And you can always blot off some of that color too if you don't want that super dark brown color. We'll add some brown that's to the fins too. And I think that looks super cool. So it's really just a unique kind of looking watercolor. And the cool part is you're able to control your layers and how much color you add and um, really get that unique effect there. So just by coloring right onto the surface and blending that out with a water brush, you can get some cool effects. Now I'm gonna also show you guys how to create a background too. So what I'm gonna go is I'm gonna go in here with a little bit of color. And again, I scribble when I add these down. You could be more precise if you want to. But look, they blend out so easily, especially on this Bristol. I can't stress that enough. Um, I haven't tried these on other cardstocks, but I know even some, you know, craft market markers work better on Bristol too. So it really does give great effects. So I go in little sections here because that Bristol, you know, if you leave it on there for too long, it doesn't blend super well. So I go on in little sections, add little scribbles here and there. Okay, that looks really bad, but when you blend it out here, it really adds a whole new look to your piece. So then I'm just gonna blend that color all the way out into the background. Scribble on some more color. And then I'm going to blend that out into the background too. But the cool part about adding the marker onto the paper is instead of getting like a really solid wash of color, you get what I really like. So you get some shading um, and it really doesn't, you know, some people aren't great at shading. It takes a long time to kind of figure out how to, you know, exactly how to shade or get the perfect result that you want. But when you're adding markers down to the surface, it already provides you with shading there. It gives you where the shading should be. Um, by wherever you lay down the color, it'll be a little bit darker there and then you can drag out the color however far you want it. So that's what I really love about these. It's so much fun. So there's the end of this piece. I'll go in and I'll heat set this. Now another fun thing you could do is take your water brush and just go in after you've already watercolored and drop in some little dots of color. And look, look, it lifts it off the surface. So you can create this little turtle some fun bubbles by adding on some water spots. So I'm just doing this with my paintbrush here because um, I don't want to spray the whole turtle. And look, it doesn't look like much right now. But I'm gonna go in with my rag and I'll lift off some of that color. by tapping on the surface there, you lift off some really cool effects that make it look more like water. 
And then if I even want to, I can go in with this turtle. I said it was a little bit darker than I wanted it. So I'll go into those squares there, give it a couple seconds. And then we'll go in and lift off some of that color. So it just lightens and brightens your image. So if I want that face to be more visible, give it a couple of seconds after you've added the water. And look, it adds a little highlights and creates a really cool finished project. So all I did for the last one, I just kept it how I had it on that piece of cardstock there. And then I you know, stamped one of those fun sentiments from the set and finished it off really easily like that. So I think just this kind of really stand out on the card. It was pretty simple to do with those markers and I hope you guys really love it. I think that looks so awesome. And Crayola Markers did that, which is really super impressive. So I think we shouldn't underestimate them for sure. Thanks Melody. I think this is so much fun. I was exploring with it all of today, experimenting with it, and it creates some really cool effects. Now for the last technique, yeah, you could definitely do a whole background like that. Maybe I'll try that next. Maybe I'll try that in just a second here. Um, I want to do, I want to show you one more way to kind of apply them here. So I'm going to grab one of these butterflies. I like this one. It's kind of unique. I like how that looks. Or actually, I'll create with this one because I feel like I like that black space in the middle. It provides lots of contrast there. So this is the Scribbly Insects stamp set. And I'm going to go in again with... Where's my stamp pad? During the live stream, I just look around and forget exactly where my supplies are. Because um, it can get a little bit messy while we're creating. So I'm going to go in with my piece of Bristol cardstock again. And I'm just using my archival ink to add on lots of ink here. And then I'll stamp it onto my Bristol. And once I've got it all stamped down, I have this piece next to me. You could use a sheet of acetate. You could really use whatever you want for this. But this is a tonic, easy, clean craft sheet. And I like it because it's nice and white, so you can see whatever kind of colors you put onto it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take some colors that I have. I'm just going to scribble them right onto the sheet. And you notice that right when they get scribbled on here, they kind of bubble and bead up. And that's exactly what we want. That's what's so nice about this, because it kind of repels that ink, but it creates a fun palette for you to work with. So we're adding on some rainbow colors here. A fun assortment of rainbow colors for this beautiful butterfly. I'm going to stick with mostly bright colors here, though. Blues. And then we'll throw in a little bit of our purple color here. So let's see how many colors we can actually fit on here, but uh, I'm going to first clean up my brush by kind of wiping it on that rag off to the side. And then let's start with our watercolor. So I'm going to start off with my red. Where did I put that red down? Did I even? I don't know if I even did. Okay. So we're going to start out with our red here. We'll paint a little bit of red on both sides. And again, I love that these are scribbly because we don't have to really worry about, you know, exactly what's going to happen. So I'll go in with my orange then. We'll bring in a little bit of that orange color. And we'll bring in a lighter kind of yellowy, orangey kind of tone here. Just picking it up like a palette. So this is like a painting palette now that you've created with Crayola markers. Then we're going in with a little bit of green. This is a yellow green. So it's going to really blend nicely with our colors that we've already added. So it's a pretty bright palette here. But I know they've got a lot of like jewel tones that are a little bit darker too. So you can kind of play around with what you choose to add it in. And then if I'm not, not too fond of the really dark blue, I'll squeeze out a little bit more water and lighten it up a little bit. So if you, don't, if you just have a basic pack of colors, you can lighten them and create whatever kind of look you're going for with your color palette that you want. So look, I've created a lighter blue that started out as a super dark blue, but I made it lighter. And then I'll throw in a little bit of that purple tone. So I'll just throw in a little bit of purple in the corner of those wings there. And look, that is so much fun. I love how that looks. And again, like I said, you don't have to make it rainbow. You can really play around with whatever color palette you want. 
I'll throw in a little bit of black. This black marker is definitely like drying out. It's on its last leg. Um, but I'll throw in a little bit of that black color and I'll color the inside kind of that gray tone. Let's see, do I have a black in here? I think here's a black marker. It's not Crayola, but we're gonna have to use it to make this center a little bit darker. Thanks, Melody. I agree. I love the look of it, but it is so simple too. Like this looks like a really, you know, high quality watercolor marker you've used on here. Um, and you've just created your own palette with those Crayola markers. So it's so much fun. Um, and all you need to do to finish this off is, you know, cut it out, put it on a card or, you know, leave it as is and create your fun background around it and then stamp a fun sentiment on it. I think that's really so much fun for a simple card to, um, create with these markers. Now let's do one last thing here to kind of finish it off um, before I leave you guys. So, okay, I'm going to grab my markers here and we're gonna create a background, but I want a bigger paintbrush. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of a larger paintbrush here so that we can get our watercolor background done a little bit easier. I think Tom, you recommended this, so thanks so much. We're gonna create a watercolor background over the full thing and then lift it off. A piece of wax paper, yeah, I think it would probably do the same thing. Now these are kind of special. They have like little, I don't know, like little pieces of glass in them or something to like make it stand like this um, off the surface. So different things will give you a different look of a palette. So if you're dipping it into the palette, it might matter. But if you're just picking it up and watercoloring like this, it shouldn't really matter exactly what you use. So what I'm gonna do is I'll go in and I'm just going to wet this whole thing. We've got our colors nice and wet down there. And then I'm just going to take my brush and my brush should be a little bit wetter too. So I'll kind of start my palette off in that corner. We'll wet my brush down and we'll create a fun background here. Now I'm gonna take more marker cause I think I, I think I made it a little bit too light there the color that I wanted. There we go, it's a little bit darker now. This might be a little bit more difficult to create a background than I thought it would be, but we'll see. We'll kind of test it out here. Testing the waters to create this fun background. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit more water. Usually I stick with a water brush, so it's um, kind of new to me to keep adding water to my brush because I don't usually you know, paint a whole thing like this. Okay, so then we'll throw in a little bit of that green color. And then we'll add a little bit of that blue. To finish it off on the bottom there. So look, that's a really fun background. And I think these are um, kind of more pastel when you water them down like this. Like I said, when you color them on the surface, you get that really super bright color. But I think when you kind of water them down and paint with a brush, it gives you a, a more, um, you know, less vibrant color. When you're doing it really in detail like this, you can get the nice vibrant background. But you need a lot of marker to do that if you're going to create a whole background. But I think this is a cool, you know, like, like you're saying, a nice subtle background with some really pastel colors there. Um, so. So just heat setting that down and I think you get a really cool result like that too. Now I said one last thing, but I think we're gonna finish it off by cleaning up our mat here with another piece of cardstock. So here's the thing, I'm using Bristol again to pick up these colors and we used lots of different rainbow colors. So it might make mud here. I'm not promising it's gonna make anything super cool, but let's try it out. So I'm just going to dip my paper in here to pick up some of those colors. And yeah, like I said, I don't promise anything, um, but I just like to do that because with the stress inks, it's really cool to do that with. Um, so I wanted to try it out with this for sure. So I'll heat set it a little bit. Like I said, to layer it up, you really need to heat set that down. So yeah, this, um, 
this could definitely do something cool. I can see that being a cool background for sure. Um, you definitely kind of want to play with it. If you want to do this, you can play with different colors. I was just kind of testing the waters with it to um, kind of see how it would look. Um, but if you use certain colors with it and, and kind of watercolor like that, it can create a really cool effect. So this is just me kind of picking up my mess and I think it still created a fun background too. All right, guys, so I hope you really enjoyed this. Let me lay out all the projects we created today with these Crayola markers, too. I think it was so much fun and, uh, you know, really cool to test out a new, you know, medium that you might not have thought to use. So we created all these fun projects um, on today's video. And I hope you guys really enjoyed seeing all of these. It's always so much fun to test things out for you guys and um, come on live with here and kind of chat with you all. So let me flip it back up quickly. So thanks guys so much for joining me today. It was so much fun um, kind of chatting with you all again. I haven't live streamed in a little while um, and I know you guys, some of you guys were really asking for it. So it was so much fun to talk to you all. Thanks all so much for joining me. Um, blues and greens, yeah, blues and greens would be a great watercolor background. And um, I forgot to, I actually forgot to do the lifting on this, but let me know if you guys create a background like this. Try it with those Crayola markers or with a different medium. And also, I think as it's drying, it might be turning darker. Or maybe I was just looking at it kind of weird. But um, I think when it dried, it actually turned a little bit darker than I thought it was. Okay, so I think it would be really cool to you know stick a stencil on there and spray through it and then pick up that color. But I think I'm going to end it here today. Thank you all so much for joining me and kind of listening to me rant about these markers. It was so much fun to test out. And if you want to see that other video, again, I'll have it linked. On, on screen up here or down below after the stream is over. So if you guys are watching on replay, be sure to check that video out as well. So if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. I really appreciate that, creating content for you guys. And also click that subscribe button as well if you haven't joined my family yet. I create lots of different crafting videos, organization videos, and life hacks for crafting. So be sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Also, if you want to, you can share this video with your friends too. If you found it extra exciting and you want to share it with them, I would really appreciate that. It always helps me out. And um, I'll see you guys very soon for another card making and crafting video. Have a wonderful weekend, guys. Bye.